Remember a while ago when I asked you guys if you wanted me to talk more about Blister? No? It, you know, the, the single-player tactical shooter? Well, if you don't remember, it's because my channel was a little tinier than it is now. Yeah, it was that long ago. You're probably thinking to yourself, Durag, what the hell took you so long to talk about this game? I'm sorry, it's not my fault. The devs just took a really long time to get back to me, I swear. Joking aside, the way that I wanted to cover this game originally was basically to do the same thing as I was doing with Ready or Not, meaning that I would just go to the website, read everything off, put it into a gigantic video, and that was that. But I had other ideas. Why not do something different? Hmm. Oh, I know. I'll get an interview. Perfect. That would be great. 10 out of 10. So I tweeted them, and at the time, that was literally the only place that they were actually active was on Twitter. And they said, sure, let me just slide into those DMs. He said at the time that he wasn't able to actually do it this weekend, but he said next week he'll contact me. Well, <laughs> a month and a week later. Hey, sorry for getting back to you late. We've talked about it, and we think we're not quite ready for the proper interview just yet. We're still at a point where finding time to work on the game at all is difficult. If you have any questions you want to ask, I'd be happy to answer them for you here. So yeah, I wasn't able to get the interview, but at least I got the next best thing. I understood that they had a tiny team that only consisted of about two people. I think it only made sense that development would take a while, so I thought I'd start with that. Is my assumption correct that because you have a tiny team, things are taking longer than expected? Or is there something else going on in the background? that's preventing production and the developer replies with yes the main thing that's holding us back from working on the game is just that we need to pay rent and buy food etc blister obviously doesn't make any money yet and although we've done some searching for funding and a few pitches it can really be difficult to get an investment in two people who have never released a game before that's not to say we've given up we still work on blister a lot but we have another arm of the business which is creating enterprise vr experiences for other companies that's all nda to hell so we can't really talk about it but that work is what pays the bills for us now although we're already lucky to get to do that for a living it requires time i wish we could be working on blister we've considered kickstarter but we feel that with kickstarter that doesn't quite fit for us personally but we consider it if there was a lot of interest in the campaign for it nobody said that breaking into the gaming industry was going to be easy stay strong item 42 i believe in you my next question says how would you describe blister and what exactly is it and the developer applies with Blister is a single-player tactical first-person shooter with two distinct phases, planning and execution. That's the quick answer, but for us it's an amalgamation of a lot of things we played and watched when we were younger. It's hot fuzz crossed with Rainbow Six, buried in the satirical future of the UK. That's an interesting way to describe it. Alright, moving on. Why single-player? And how fleshed out is the story? And the developer replies with, Single player was a choice we made very early on. There's a few reasons for it. One is that we both miss single player games like this. Rainbow Six has gone a lot with multiplayer with Siege, and SWAT doesn't look like it's coming back anytime soon, so we decided to fill the gap with our own game. Another reason is that with just two of us, multiplayer is a very big task. Unfortunately, making a game with multiplayer adds many more layers of complication on top of how the game works, and just programming that, we'd likely never finish Blister if it were also multiplayer. I mean, it would have to be a totally different game, since the whole planning and execution system is based on having one player. Very interesting. You know, this game kind of reminds me of uh, Door Kickers. You know, the way that you command your troops and tell them to go to specific places. At least that's what it kind of looks like to me. But anyways, he continues. Blister's story is very much focused on the levels of the game and how they tie into the gameplay. The story comes out in details in the levels, eavesdropping on characters in game, and your choices to play the game in a lethal or non-lethal way. There's a non-linear narrative which the players can get little or as much as they want out of it by investigating and having an eye for details while playing. It's not in your face, but it is there. So this kind of sounds like environmental storytelling, which is something that I think Bethesda and um, I think if you've ever played L.A. Noire, like there will be like some storytelling things that are like in the area, but you never actually like it doesn't like occur to you unless you're ac you've actually been paying attention to what's actually going on. So that's a very very interesting thing when it comes to single player games that I love in those type of games. Environmental storytelling. It's not in your face, but it's there if you look close enough. Next question. Will this game have cutscenes and voice acting? And the developer replies with, There will be cutscenes, although mostly dripping with style, not ones that drag out with explosions. Skippable, of course. Voice acting, we are planning on having. Do you need a voice actor? <laughs> I'm afraid we're not looking for one just now. Ah, stab me in the heart! Ah! We have a few experienced people lined up, but we're not at the point of requiring lines recorded yet. Interesting, so they're gonna have cutscenes and recordings of other people. Mm, 
sounds like a pretty good game so far. All right, so let's move on to the next question. What kind of mechanics are we going to expect from our character's perspective? Like, what can we do? Can we vault? Is there melee? Is there double tap to reload your weapon? That sort of thing. And the developer replies with, there's a lot we're building into the player's abilities in Blister. Movement, especially in Rainbow Six and SWAT, although very deliberate, we always felt it could be a bit limiting. We're going a slightly more mobile route with Blister. Although the player's default movement state is walking, we do have movement abilities like vaulting, sliding, and bashing up insurgents with your running tackle. Whoa, running tackle. <laughs> There's also regular melee, which is a bit slow and makes you vulnerable, but any insurgent is going to go down from a rifle stock to their face. <laughs> yeah. I describe everything as chunky because that's how I like it. Reloading for most weapons is fairly standard, hit R, but we're trying to find interesting ways to switch that up. With shotguns, for example, you have to manually pump the shotgun after each shot. Interesting. The game won't handle that for you. It still catches me out sometimes. We want to release a new gameplay video in the future that will highlight some of the stuff and more. I'm not sure if he's referring to the video that I just showed in the beginning or if he's talking about like a brand new video that shows off a lot of the stuff. Well, I really liked what he said right here and I really can't wait to see more. So let's move on to the next one, which says, do you have a rough estimate as to when the game is going to be completed or close to early access? And the developer replies with, Blister will come to early access and that access will comprise of the first level. This level is massive. At least an hour of gameplay since levels in Blister are entire buildings with a myriad of objectives. As for early access being available, let's say 2019. That should be a good year for Blister. Hmm, pretty cool. I honestly didn't think he would say anything about that, but uh, glad he, you know, said something. All right, moving on. Is the game any different from what was shown in the video like the original trailer? And the developer replies with, the best answer to that would be a new video. But the answer is yes. Since that original video, we've rebuilt the entire game. Every single system. It plays nicer, moving feels nicer, it performs better, and there's been key gameplay changes since then too. That original version of the game was something of a test bed, and we applied everything we learned from it to build a newer blister. You can see in the pics and gifs on our Twitter that the game does look fairly different now, save for some carried over models which are likely to get replaced. Interesting. Alright, moving on. The next question says, why did you decide to make this type of game? What was the reasoning? And the developer replies with, we miss SWAT and old Rainbow Six. Like I said in the other answer, we felt this game genre hasn't seen much love recently, so we thought we could contribute. But it's not a complete homage aiming to recreate either of those games. It's a unique experience which introduces some new things too. You know, he's right. There hasn't been too many SWAT or original Rainbow Six games recently. That's why I've been trying to cover, you know, games like this and Ready or Not and Ground Branch. Just to hopefully keep, you know, games like these alive. But yeah, w what a great answer from the dev. Let's move on to the next one. Can I ask who the devs are and why you decided to be a game developer? And the developer replies with, we think that video games are the culmination of many art forms. It allows us to explore the whole gamut of the creative spectrum, from art to programming, storytelling, and music. It contains every form under the sun, and we love that. As you know, there are two of us, and although it means a lot of work for us to do, we have learned things that we never would otherwise. We decided to work together since we both had the passion and our skills overlap quite perfectly. I, Reagan, do the programming and have some 3D modeling experience. Brett covers the whole art spectrum having a traditional art skill and oodles of 3D modeling and sculpting experience and is a musician. Between us, we almost have everything covered, even if it takes us a long time. Wow. Man, I look up to these guys. Thanks for your questions. I hope my answers give enough insight. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, answering all my questions. I know I couldn't get the interview, but, you know, at least I got the next best thing. And thank you, the viewer, for listening in. I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye bye